welcome to Fresno City Vision. I'm Heather Hanks. As Fresno continues to grow in population, the number of vehicles on local roads will continue to increase as well. In the past, cities have tried to deal with this issue simply by building more and bigger roads. But today, cities like Fresno are taking a different path to keep traffic moving smoothly. Joining me to talk about roads and traffic and other related issues is Patrick Weimiller, the Director of Public Works for the City of Fresno. Patrick, welcome to City Vision. Thank you, Heather. Good to be here. <laughs> so tell me, uh, what is the city's strategy for dealing with more traffic? Well, we have been developing a state-of-the-art uh, computer-based fiber network that is going to help us by making better use of the roads that we have. We are introducing the intelligent transportation system, and that involves traffic synchronization and other elements that help to make sure the residents get around the city uh, more easily and with less delays. Tell me more about that system. How have we been expanding it? Well, we initially uh, introduced the ITS, the Intelligent Transportation System, on Blackstone Avenue and then on Herndon. And the Herndon's been the, the uh, corridor that's had the most success and we've received the most praise about. It has come about helping not only in, in enabling traffic to get around easier, it helps people save gas. It, it definitely cuts down on the pollution in the environment. It's been our biggest step forward in cleaning up the air in the uh, Central Valley. So, so tell me, what does it do on Herndon Avenue? They can get from start to finish, no stops? Right, right now if you go from the uh, east end of the city, which is at Willow Avenue on Herndon, uh, out to 99, it's possible to make that without hitting any red lights. Or if you do hit a red light or two, it'll be a pretty brief stop. It just depends upon what's going on with the balance of the traffic and how the system is moving traffic along. But several times that I've driven it, I've been able to do it without having to do a stop, and I've had that reported by other folks as well. How convenient. Uh, can you give me other examples of this intelligent transportation system? Well, like I said, we initially introduced it on Herndon and Blackstone. We've expanded it already to include Kings Canyon, Clovis and Chestnut we're going, and Cedar. We're going to continue expansions in other areas in the coming year. We have uh, other Shaw Avenue and Fryant underway and we'll be uh, doing others in the future. Bullard and McKinley and, and Belmont and other streets that will be coming in the future. We've been at this for quite a few years now. Um, tell me more about how it's monitored and, and how we manage it as a city. Sure. Originally, we came up with this concept of building a traffic operations center that could monitor the entire city traffic circulation. And that process began in 1995 and became a reality in the early 2000s. So we currently do have a traffic operations center that's able to monitor this. The same people that work there are the ones that are developing the system, doing the engineering and design work that help to expand this program and will into the future. We've invested about $18 million so far in the process, and the great thing has been that this has come from outside money. We have won competitive grants, air quality grants, because this has such a marvelous impact on air quality, and we've been able to use that to, in turn, not only improve our air quality, but to improve quality of life for people getting around, improve their commute times, and uh, lower their fuel consumption by 18% is what we're seeing. So we're saving gas, we're improving air quality, uh, and we're helping residents uh, get around in the city. That's awesome. Um, can you tell me other things we're doing in, in the area of Fresno for, you know, to improve transportation? Sure. We have some other things that are good old physical adjustments that are going on. We're doing some redesign of certain streets to in ensure that they match up to the uh, flows of traffic that are experiencing. Occasionally we do some widening and other times we actually narrow the areas and uh, expand our bicycle transportation network. We're promoting bicycling, we're promoting uh, public transportation as well. All of this to help us in, have an easier time of cir traffic circulation in the city. How, how could the public get more information and, and learn about ITS and, and things they can do to conserve and sure. support it? On the city's website, www.fresno.gov slash ITS. And there's plenty of information on there, and you'll be able to see where our existing network is and where we're developing in the future and some, some great information about the program. 
uh, looking to the future, tell me uh, the, the bigger plans or where we're headed. Um, does it require more competitive grants? You know, how do we continue achieving this success? We do continue to go after grants. We probably have another $22 million worth of work that's programmed out that we have to land the money in for. But we're also having to recalibrate some of the uh, work that we've already done, which is a sign of success. Herndon became so successful that with the added traffic, we now have to recalibrate to adjust for the new larger traffic because people otherwise might take alternative routes when they thought Herndon was too difficult to travel on. So there's ongoing uh, fine-tuning that goes on and development of additional corridors and we're introducing wireless, not just fiber-based uh, controls, but wireless controls that will help us to be able to go out and do that many more intersections. We think eventually we'll have about 75 or 80 percent of our intersections that are controlled by our intelligent transportation system. And, and that requires staff um, behind the scenes or it's now connected and we can operate efficiently with less staff? How does that work? We can do it with about the staff that we have we, if we just continue the building blocks as we go forward. Our annual maintenance cost is around $700,000 a year and that includes all the staff costs and equipment and the like so it's actually very affordable for what it's delivered. If you look that uh, people are saving millions of dollars a year just on gasoline costs that are benefiting from the transportation system. So uh, it's, it's a very good payoff on our investment. Uh, any suggestions to the viewers that uh, they can do you know, in their environment to meet those goals, you know, reducing air pollution, you know, following different paths that you might have improved that they aren't aware of? Well, again, if they go to their website, fresno.gov slash ITS, they can look at where the corridors are and they'll uh, do better by uh, following along on those corridors that are developed and we do encourage bicycle riding when that's uh, practical and reasonable, it's healthy and uh, it helps the environment, helps people get fit. Thank you very much Patrick for coming today to talk about uh, the city's transportation strategy. Uh, it sounds like we're making incredible progress and we appreciate you. Um, my guest today has been Patrick Weimiller, the Director of Public Works for the City of Fresno. If you'd like more information about the city's intelligent transportation system, you can find it on the internet at www.fresno.gov ITS. That's all we have time for today. I'm Heather Hanks. Thank you for joining us this edition of Fresno City Vision.